100 on the Appalachian Trail. Mom is driving me back to the Smarts Mountain Trailhead, celebrating day 100 with a little bit of Dunkin' Donuts. And we're just driving down a really long dirt road to get there. So, eating my breakfast now. I'm gonna hike up Smarts Mountain in a little bit and hopefully make it to the top this time. And the weather does look good, doesn't it? Looks awesome. Yeah, the skies look blue for now. So 61 degrees. 61 degrees. I haven't checked the forecast, but fingers crossed, no rain. We got the AT. We got mom leaving. Bye, Bye mom. <laughs> and let's hike. <laughs> Two tenths of a mile in. I do not need to be wearing my puppy jacket. Also, I have this backpack. It's Sea to Summit. It only weighs like an ounce or two. So I added that to my gear list to kind of help me with slack packing. So I'm slack packing today. After my mom dropped me off, she's bringing my backpack to the Barn Door Hostel because I'm going to stay there tonight. And I'm really excited to experience that hostel again. And then the Notch Hostel in Lincoln, New Hampshire messaged me on Instagram and they asked if I wanted to slack pack two days from now. So just to make that all easier, I decided to pack my UL backpack and I can slack pack some of these early New Hampshire mountains. And I don't know if I'm gonna keep that little backpack the whole trail, but it's really useful for things like that when opportunities come up and I don't have to carry my full pack. So I think the fact that I don't have to carry 20 something pounds on my back um, definitely helps my mood a little bit. If you've seen my previous videos, you know that I've definitely been struggling on trail a little bit. So the fact that I can slack pack and not carry all that weight, I think will just make the trail a little bit better, a little bit easier. And I think it would just be really good for my mental health, at least for now to kind of get me going through New Hampshire and into Maine in this last big stretch of trail. Back at the pretty rocks where I ended up turning around a couple days ago. That's the view today. Definitely feel like I'm in a better headspace today than I was three days ago. I just, I don't know, it was weird a few days ago. I just felt like I couldn't physically move forward. And I don't know, I take, I take mental health seriously and I wasn't feeling it, so I knew I had to do something about it. And it was a really good decision for me. And I feel like I kind of let go of my goal of trying to do this through hike faster than my last through hike. And I think once I realized that I didn't have to do it faster, that I, I think I feel a lot, I don't know, more stress-free, laid back. And I think I'm gonna enjoy the through hike a little more. I do still want to do the through hike faster because I do have to get home, I do have to go to work, and I do want a nice summer at home on the lake. But I'm not gonna, I don't know, put my mental health at jeopardy just for the sake of beating my time. Whew. It is hot, I am sweating. Ooh, brand new smart water. Good thing there's bars on these rocks because they are slippery. <laughs> I made it to the top of the Smarts Mountain Fire Tower. There's a view, but the second I got to the summit, it started raining. <laughs> Here, I'll show you. Got a little bit of a view in all the directions. I'm hiking that way next, so maybe Mount Cube is one of those. We can hear the wind up here too. All right, quick stop, time to go back down. Whoa, that's heavy. I think it actually only rained while I was on the summit of Smarts Mountain, but I just climbed the fire tower quick enough to see the view and to show you the view and then got down 
Now I'm kind of doing a walking lunch. I got a banana and I also have a couple wake up wraps that I packed out from Duncan this morning. And now I'm on my way. I got six and a half miles until the next mountain, which is Mount Cube. I guess I just went up and over the summit of Mount Cube without realizing it. Well, I went over the summit of the South Peak. The summit of the North Peak is down a side trail, so I'm not gonna do that. I will put a little screenshot of the elevation for today on the screen so you can kind of see what it looks like. I mean, there were just two big climbs that I did this morning. I mean, they weren't that big, Smarts Mountain and Cube Mountain. And now I probably only have a thousand feet of elevation gain between now and where I'm ending the day at Route 25 C. Uh, that should be about eight miles away. So I think that should be easier. I think I got the hard part out of the way so far. It is 3.14 p.m. I got a little bit of a late start. I don't think I started hiking until around 10 this morning. Uh, the good thing about taking a few days off of trail is that I am seeing familiar faces again. So the water source in between Smarts and Cube there was a big group all sitting there filtering water and I had met most of them before so that was really fun. I just texted the barn door hostel with my ETA for when I get to Route 25C which like I said is eight miles from here so I'm gonna try to do that quick. Their last pickup is at 7 p.m. so I'm gonna try to get there for 6 30 but my backpack feels super light and I'm feeling good, so I think this will go by fast. No, oh, these are some nice new stairs on this trail. Looking back at some of the videos that I already filmed today, I feel like I look really different without my buff. Earlier today, I was listening to a podcast from Trail Tales, where Kyle interviewed someone going for the fastest snow time on the AT this year, and that was super motivating. <laughs> that Not that I would ever go for an FKT on the Appalachian Trail, but just hearing him talk kind of helped me climb those mountains a little easier. So I'm going to put another podcast in for the rest of the day and get these miles done. So this right here is Route 25A. I just have to walk another 4.8 miles to Route 25C, and that's gonna do it for today. Easy as that. I'm at mile 17 already, and I feel like today has gone by really quick. I only have one mile left until I get to Route 25C, and I have like 45 minutes to do that mile so I don't have to rush I feel like I get I did a good job planning that shuttle because sometimes I'm not so good at planning what time I need to get picked up and I usually end up rushing and like jogging the last few miles but thankfully that's not the case I am super hungry I have snacks in my backpack but I think once I just get to the parking lot a little bit earlier then I'll have a snack and then also, I believe we can stop at Dollar General on the way to the hostel and maybe get some Hot Pockets like I did last time and some soda and just some fun things to have tonight. I gotta treat myself. This is day 100 on the trail. All right. I believe this is the little parking lot that I'm getting picked up. 15 minutes to spare. I guess it is nice getting here early and having time to spare, but just like being on the side of the road and having all these like motorcycles and pickup trucks and everyone just drive by and look at me, just a girl by myself on the side of the road, it feels a little awkward. It's 6.20 right now, so I should only be here a couple more minutes.
So I got to the barn door hostel, stopped at a little store on my way here, was able to get some slices of pizza, and I've just been eating this pint of ice cream. What's the flavor? Peanut butter fudge. Um, I've just been eating this while I was on the Funwood chat. It's a really good day, um, but now it's, I think, a little after eight, and I think I'm just gonna crawl in the bunk bed and either watch TV, edit YouTube videos, probably both, and get a good night's sleep. And I'll probably head back to the trail tomorrow at like 7.30 to hike Mount Musilaki and enter the White Mountains. So, exciting things coming up, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Where'd you come from?